the futility of prime factory methods for the product of two primes. My motto, plain honesty, simple truth, easy understanding, the joy of finding things out for yourself. The simpleton's mathematical coat of arms. In Euclid, we trust. The aim of this upload is to show Joe Public, aspiring mathematicians and simpletons like myself, that the only truly credible way for us to factorise a composite into its prime constituents is by trial division, preferably using a programme produced by a top-notch mathematician like Petra Lastovica, as per his devices macro, which is part of his precise calculator software available as a free download from sourceforge.com. This slide shows what I call the characteristic integers that result from factorising the product of any two primes. The red integers are what we already know from the composites of the two primes. The blue integers are what we are trying to find, namely the two primes concerned. The black characteristic integers are the ones that arise as a direct consequence of the red and blue ones when we find the solution. As the two examples for the product of two primes demonstrate, when faced only with the composite we have absolutely no idea of the relative magnitude of the two primes to each other. All preceding incorrect trials give us absolutely no information about the correct factorization. We need a direct hit to obtain the correct answer and a systematic approach is the only solution. Application of the various methods shows us that starting from the integer of the square root, they all require the same number of steps to obtain the correct answer compared to trial division. Fermat's method of prime factorization may seem a better proposition than trial division as the integers we are seeking are by one variant of the method only half the size of the original primes but then we have to use both the odd and even integers so the number of steps doubles and we are no better off. It also carries a higher computational penalty than trial division. In fact we are basically far far worse off than trial division because the difference of the two primes after halving may be either above or below the integer of the square root. A disaster, the complications of which I'll leave to you to work out. Here we have the basic relationships resulting from the characteristic integers, all of which are dependent on the two primes in the first place, so no advantages accrue compared to trial division. Here we demonstrate a formal a form of trial division using two simple equations, the solution of which entails the characteristic integers. Prior incorrect divisions give no clues as to the correct solution. This is a divisional algorithm derived from the previous one, which requires far more computational effort, but still ends with the same characteristic integers in the same number of steps as trial division. This and the next slide show the output for the quadratic equation programmed into Microsoft Excel. And again, we only get the integer results shown when the number of steps is the same as trial division and when the other criteria are satisfied. This slide shows the integer output for the quadratic results of the second pair of primes. And finally, the numerical A plus minus b equals c relationship obtained from the results in column a when column b equals the composite of the two primes minus one and column c equals one and minus one. You will find on page 238 of the book The Music of the Primes by Marcus de Sautois the following paragraph. His failure to crack 8051 fueled Pomerantz's lifelong quest for a fast way to factorise numbers. Eventually he learnt about the trick 
his school teacher had had in mind. Before 1977, the smartest way to crack numbers still, amazingly, belonged to the man whose little theorem was the catalyst for the invention of RSA's prime number code. Fermat's factorization method is a fast way to factorize special choices of numbers by exploiting some simple algebra. Using Fermat's method, Pomerantz took just seconds to crack 8051 into 83 times 97. Fermat, who loved the idea of secret codes, would probably have been delighted to find his work at the heart of making and breaking codes some three centuries later. Now it might have come to your attention that 8051 is close to 8100. In fact, it's only 49 short. Now if you are a little bit perceptive, you may well have noticed that 49 is 7 squared, and also possibly that 8100 is in fact 81 times 100, which equals 9 squared times 10 squared equals 90 squared. So that 90 squared minus 7 squared factorizes as 90 plus 7 times 90 minus 7 equals 97 times 83 equals 8051. You almost certainly would have known that for trial division, one starts from the integer part of the square root, which for 8051 is 89. So we divide by 87 first and get a non-integer answer. Ignore 85 and then divide by 83. So in two steps it's voila! How many of the thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands, of its readers have spotted what I consider to be feeble justification for a method? I have only just spotted it after many years of ownership of the book myself. Just to qualify what I have already said regarding factorization methods, the comments do not apply to the factorization sieves resulting from higher mathematics, of which I have absolutely no knowledge, understanding or access to, and are used to the best of my understanding for very large composites. Finally, I should mention that we can achieve an edge with trial division over more formal methods by reducing the size of the number field we have to employ by using sieves to remove the composites of some of the smaller primes such as 3, 5, 7 etc. But the scope is limited for us mere mortals.